Okay, let's get started. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Getting Started with Container Runtime Security Using Falcopy. I'm Jerry Fallon. I'll be moderating today's webinar. We'd like to welcome our presenter today, Loris Dijani, CTO and founder at Sysdig. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of the Code of Conduct. Please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please note that the recording and slides will be posted later today on the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. With that, I'll hand it over to Lawrence to kick off today's presentation. Thank you very much and uh, welcome uh, everyone to this webinar. Today, we're going to talk about uh, runtime security uh, and uh, uh, in particular runtime security with uh, a, an open source tool, which is also a CNCF incubating uh, project, which is called Falco. My name is uh, Loris De Giovanni. I'm CTO and uh, founder uh, of uh, Sysdig. Sysdig is uh, my second company. My first company was uh, called uh, Case Technologies and was the uh, commercial entity behind uh, an open source network analyzer called Wireshark. So I have done um, uh, open source uh, for uh, uh, my whole career in the networking space first and uh, now uh, in uh, uh, cloud native. Um, right now I work for a company called Sysdig. Sysdig offers uh, visibility, uh, observability and security tools for uh, cloud native Kubernetes based and cloud uh, uh, and container based uh, uh, applications. Uh, Sysdig is uh, um, uh, based heavily on uh, open source, but offers also commercial solutions on top of uh, uh, our uh, open source projects uh, like, uh, like Falco. We're heavily integrated with uh, the uh, rest of the ecosystem and we, we tend to focus on uh, enterprise customers uh, and uh, we have uh, essentially products that uh, scale and uh, offer solutions to uh, any scale uh, when, when it's a matter of security uh, and visibility for, for Kubernetes. Today we're going to talk about uh, uh, an overview of runtime security, uh, comparing uh, different approaches uh, when uh, dealing with instrumentation for runtime security and understanding essentially the pros and cons of instrumenting your containers, your applications, uh, your workloads uh, with, uh, with these different approaches. We're then going to dive uh, into uh, Falco. I will give an overview of Falco and then I will uh, try to become a little bit more practical to show you know, uh, a little bit of uh, the Falco architecture, how rules work and so on. And then we'll try to put this uh, in practice uh, quickly in terms of uh, showing Falco in action and uh, uh, seeing, it, seeing it essentially in, in a demo. And then I will uh, finish the presentation. I will finish the webinar with a little bit of uh, history and, uh, and what's coming next, you know, for Falco. So first of all, overview of uh, runtime security. Let's start by what is runtime security and why uh, we need it. So runtime security means being able to observe and protect your software, your containers, your applications as they run. They run uh, in uh, development or test environments or they run even more importantly in production. This is uh, uh, extremely important because uh, uh, security breaches and risks happen while our software is running. So it's very important to protect the software during the whole you know, CI CD pipeline. But uh, in practice, the risks happen while our software is actually deployed somewhere and runs, uh, right? Um, example of uh, uh, stuff that you can uh, accomplish with uh, runtime security. 
detecting malicious behavior, understanding if uh, an image is drifted uh, from uh, uh, when we created it and we put it in, in, in a repository. Uh, find uh, issues or vulner vulnerabilities that are only present and, and only surface during the runtime of, uh, of your containers. Uh, detecting uh, threats that are like zero day vulnerabilities that were not yet uh, exposed and documented when uh, your software was created and was pushed to, to a repository. Runtime security is uh, an integral uh, starting point for uh, things like uh, incident response or forensics. Typically, uh, your forensics uh, activity, uh, you know, understanding the blast radius of an, of an attack or something like that always starts essentially from uh, uh, signals and data that are collected that are collected during, during runtime. And of course, runtime is also uh, extremely important uh, in terms of compliance because uh, frameworks like PCI, NIST, or uh, SOC uh, essentially depend very much uh, on uh, understanding what's happening while your containers, your applications are running. This slide uh, depicts uh, a little bit uh, sort of the CI CD journey, right? And I used to uh, articulate these as build, run, respond. The phases of life, uh, the stages of life of uh, uh, a modern application. And uh, as we know very well, uh, security in cloud native is not only one of these items, but it's making sure that the whole journey of your code from uh, your laptop to a production environment and after you know production after maybe uh, the containers uh, are gone is all properly monitored and uh, secure um, in during the build phase uh, it's important for example to have uh, vulnerability scanning configuration validation during runtime as we were saying runtime security vulnerability reporting security monitoring and then of course you need to respond to to the issues that happen so incident response forensics audit uh, I, it's important uh, to uh, clarify that uh, all, of, all of these are essential uh, when talking about the correct posture for uh, cloud native applications. This webinar focuses specifically on the middle of the slide, on the green uh, part, not because you know, we think it's the only important one or not because we think that Falco is the only thing that you need to deploy. Uh, but because because we think that Falco is, is, is an important piece in the equation. So as you, as you think about this, as you think about your holistic approach to this, uh, this webinar will hopefully, you know, give you information about how to cover the central piece and in particular how to do that with the cloud native uh, CNCF tool, which is Falco. Uh, let's uh, go a little bit more into um, uh, the uh, uh, technology here and into uh, the uh, actual implementation. And let's start talking, first of all, about uh, what it, where, where a runtime security starts. Runtime security starts from being able to collect the best data from uh, processes and containers that are running live on your infrastructure. Uh, so, uh, if we simplify the concept uh, as much as possible, we uh, have, for example, something like an application that is running inside the container, that is running on top of, 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 of an operating system in a machine. And of course, you, you will have uh, uh, almost guaranteed, you know, multiple applications and multiple processes running on top of multiple containers, running on top of, uh, of, of multiple machines. So this is just a, a, a little piece of, of, of the equation. But from this point of view, essentially, uh, it's very important to collect uh, uh, signals that are very rich for uh, this application. And in order to do that, essentially, we need to be able to intercept the path of communication between the application and, and the external world. And this goes through the operating system. Right, uh, and we want to understand uh, uh, what this application does uh, on the network, 
for example. We want to understand what this application does on the file system. We want to understand what this application does in terms uh, of um, activity, uh, like executing commands, spawning processes, doing inter-process communication, uh, accessing data, all of this kind of stuff. Um, and typically, all of this information goes through the operating system, and so we want to be able to intercept it. One way to do that is a technique so-called LD preload. LD preload consists in um, taking a, uh, a running application and somehow replacing uh, the libraries that this application uses to talk to the to the operating system. So we instead of using the normal, for example, C libraries, the C library is what, what is typically used by the majority of the applications to uh, access the file system, doing everything that has to do with, uh, with system calls, like opening files, establishing connections, all this kind of stuff. We can somehow, as the container loads, replace the libc that is inside the container by maybe, maybe mapping a volume or something like that, and, you, and then use an environment variable to tell the container, okay, go and use this different libc, which is instrumented. The instrumented libc is able essentially to act as a pass-through for all of these calls that the application does to the operating system and uh, collect them and ship them somewhere so that they can be uh, analyzed and can be used as signal uh, as signals for runtime security. A deep reload is used by uh, many um, projects and vendors because uh, it has the benefit that uh, uh, it works pretty much uh, everywhere. It's, uh, it's efficient and it's a relatively easy and relatively low risk way to essentially observe any, anything at, the, at high granularity that, that your applications are doing. Uh, it also has limitations. Uh, the big uh, one uh, is uh, probably uh, the third one here on this slide, which is uh, um, in order for you to be able to replace libc, your application needs to use libc, which is sort of a traditionally a good assumption, you know, because uh, everything, C applications, Java applications, Python, you name it, they all use libc. But there are nowadays whole classes of uh, applications that don't. For example, Go as a programming language, very interestingly, uh, really implements uh, its own runtime. And one of the design um, uh, kind of architectural choices of Go is that uh, Go produces fully static binaries. So Go doesn't use external libraries. So this trick of loading different libraries doesn't work for a Go application, which as you can imagine is uh, a uh, pretty strong limitation in, uh, in, in, in cloud native. Uh, and of course, you know, LD preload requires you to go and instrument every container. So let's look at uh, another way to do this. Another way is by using ptrace. Ptrace is a functionality in the Linux of, of uh, operating system. And uh, it's uh, actually the facility in Linux that is used to create stuff like debuggers. So GDB, is essentially a glorified user interface on top of ptrace. I don't want to diminish what GDB does. It's something that all of us use all the time. But uh, the magic uh, to uh, freeze a target process, uh, set a breakpoint, introspect the process, the registers, the memory, change stuff uh, into, into the target process, this is all stuff that uh, uh, GDB essentially just calls this, this Linux system called, called Ptrace to do that. Um, Ptrace uh, is uh, uh, nice because uh, it is a facility of the operating system. So it's much more accurate. For example, when you, when you use Ptrace, you, it, you don't need a dynamic library to do the instrumentation. So um, uh, these covers, for example, Go processes. Uh, Ptrace is a language and stack independent because it relies on Linux, on the operating system and not on a library or on a piece of functionality or on a language that you're, the, that you're using. Uh, it's also safer than a deep reload because it doesn't require you to do the relatively dirty trick of rep replacing libraries, but you can do that by just telling Ptrace, okay, I want essentially to introspect every single system call. So beautiful, <laughs> only problem is uh, Ptrace is very inefficient because uh, 
if you look at the diagram, every time there's essentially a request like opening a file or establishing a connection, you need to do a bunch of stuff essentially in the operating system to, to uh, pass all of this data to a separate process, which is depicted as an agent here in the diagram to, uh, that, that, that can receive this data. So um, Bitrace is uh, the uh, magic uh, bullet uh, for, uh, for everything. With, with the only problem that um, it's, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, it's too slow typically to be used in production. Uh, and of course with Pitrace as well, we uh, need to, uh, uh, we are required to instrument every container. Let's look at another possible uh, way to do this, um, which is uh, kernel-based instrumentation. So what we do here, is slightly different. Here we have still the diagram of uh, the uh, machine and uh, we um, see three containers on, the ma on this machine uh, based on three different essentially container runtimes. And uh, what uh, uh, happens here is uh, uh, you deploy essentially your instrumentation as another container running on the same uh, machine. Um, this uh, container, what it does is it instruments the operating system. Linux uh, nowadays offers a functionality called eBPF. eBPF uh, is the acronym for uh, Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. And uh, it's uh, essentially a full-blown, powerful virtual machine that can be used to uh, execute programs inside uh, the kernel of the operating system. EBPF is cool because essentially it allows you to add functionality to the kernel of the operating system, but in a way that is fully validated uh, and uh, that uh, uh, guarantees that you are not crashing the operating systems or generating deadlocks in the operating system. By doing this, it's possible essentially to create a layer of instrumentation that now sits underneath the containers. So you don't need to live inside the containers and that uh, um, is able to, without any change, without any sidecar or, or installing anything in the container, it's able to um, uh, uh, collect the data that is required. Uh, kernel instrumentation has the advantage of being extremely accurate because it runs in the kernel of the of operating system. You cannot fool it. Um, you, um, uh, it's uh, uh, extremely efficient and extremely scalable. Extremely efficient because the data is collected um, in a, a way uh, just really where it's generated in the kernel of the operating system. And it's scalable because you don't need, it's, it's the only way when you, where you don't need to put something inside every, every container, but another container, an external container can do that. So imagine having, I don't know, entry containers running uh, on a single machine with LD preload and with ptrace, you will need to instrument entry different things. With kernel level instrumentation, you will only do, need to do the instrumentation one, once. When talking about instrumentation, the other thing that is important is uh, metadata collection and applying metadata to the detections. So this slide shows a bunch of hosts, each of which is running four containers. And here the color coding is essentially the service that these containers uh, uh, belong to. Uh, when um, uh, working, with anything related to runtime security, you typically don't want to approach things like on the left side of the slide, but you want to look at things like on the, on the right side. So service by service, you want to apply rules uh, that are per namespace, per service, per deployment, and not per host or per, con per container. All right, this is the theory. Okay, now let's move into the practice and let's start talking about Falco. What is Falco, first of all? Falco is a runtime security engine based on observability from the kernel. So when I was showing you the different options before, the one that Falco privileges when possible is collection based on access to the kernel of the operating system because of the reasons that I was mentioning before. Sometimes this is not possible and I will show it to you uh, quickly in the demo. In that case, we switch 
to other uh, mechanisms like P-Trace, but by default, Falco wants to be as scalable and efficient as possible. So when BPF is available, that's what we use. Falco is designed to be consumable and modular. So as I was saying, Falco is designed not to be your complete solution for Kubernetes security, for cloud native security, but is designed to be a component in it that can be orchestrated and can be uh, composed together with other stuff to create the full solution that is ideal for you. And this full solution, uh, of course, uh, can be part of uh, a, something that is built completely um, out of uh, uh, community built uh, and maintained pieces. But Falco is also designed to potentially, if required, to uh, be connected to uh, proprietary components and, uh, to, and to commercial products. Um, Falco uh, uh, puts a lot of emphasis not only or, or, uh, or, uh, on using the kernel as a source of truth, but also on enriching the data with metadata so that your approach can be serv uh, service oriented. Uh, and uh, um, it, uh, it essentially allows you to create uh, or to leverage a bunch of rules, and then it gives you alarms when one of these rules is, uh, is violated. Falco is a CNCF incubating project. Uh, and we released Falco in 2016. We it became part of CNCF in 2018, and uh, it was promoted to incubation in 2019. Uh, we are strong, strongly driven as a community uh, by community principles. In particular, we are inspired by everything that is cloud native and Kubernetes first in, in the way we manage our community. We really try to be you know like the voice and, and of our end users and work together with them but we also want to be vendor friendly and, and vendor neutral so we as you can see there are multiple commercial entities that uh, uh, take falco and, uh, and enhance it and, and base their products uh, uh, on top of falco uh, a couple of uh, examples of uh, using falco in production one is shopify big production environment uh, it's uh, essentially a PCI compliant environment in the cloud in uh, AWS slash uh, uh, EKS. And uh, um, this is, you know, Shopify is a big company that does a lot of transactions and uh, uh, they are, uh, you know, 100 to $150 million of transactions uh, per day are essentially a pro in, in an environment that is protected by Falco and where Falco contributes to uh, establishing essentially PCI compliance and making the environment PCI, uh, PCI compliant. Uh, Shopify specifically, I recommend uh, to uh, go to the CNCF YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, there was a wonderful keynote at the last uh, KubeCon uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe, in, 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 in Amsterdam, where um, uh, the Shopify team together with uh, uh, Chris Nova showed essentially uh, on stage um, uh, Falco used by, by Shopify. And it's very interesting if you want to learn more about their use case. Another use case is Skyscanner. Uh, Skyscanner um, has uh, 200 plus nodes on 30 clusters with 160 services on top of them. And uh, I have a link to the blog post in which they describe essentially how they use Falco and uh, uh, the kind of uh, evaluation that they did with Falco before putting it in, in, into production. For example, it's very interesting to look how important for them uh, the overhead of this instrumentation was. And we go back to, you know, P-Trace versus kernel module and so on, and how they really scrutinized, uh, you know, Falco uh, uh, performance-wise and overhead-wise before deploying it on their, on their infrastructure. And blog posts like that, are cool for me to see because of course the Falco community and the Falco engineers put a lot of effort into making it efficient. So seeing how it can be used in production is always very, very rewarding. Architecturally, Falco is relatively simple. It has inputs, an engine, and outputs. Uh, inputs are uh, all of these events coming from, from instrumenting the application. So system calls, kernel events, uh, activity events, uh, user, user activity, network data, all of this kind of stuff. And also Kubernetes events in the form of audit events and in the form of metadata. All of this goes into the engine 
uh, which receives rules as, uh, as its other input. And essentially the rules are matched against the stream of, of data that is con constantly coming into the engine. And if ru rules matches, if rules match, uh, a, a, an alert is generated through a number of ways. Again, Falco is designed to be composable. So gRPC, webhook, syslog, SDK, Slack, you, you name it, you know? We have uh, all of these ways essentially to, to notify you that, uh, that some rule was, was violated. Collection-wise, um, uh, two great sources of data, as I was saying. One is the system calls. The other one is the Kubernetes events. And rules can be created on both and can be mixed and matched. Uh, so you can uh, mix a, a rule that is specific on, for example, of, of a system call, like opening a specific file, which one, which is based on a Kubernetes action, like, uh, I don't know, spinning up uh, a, a service or something like that. And, 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 and rules essentially can take these two sources of data and alert on, on either one or both together. Rules, so what's a rule exactly? Compared to other, tools like, for example, I don't know, uh, an OPA, uh, to mention something that is uh, a very popular rule engine for Kubernetes. Falco focuses more on staying close to the edge, high performance, and uh, simplicity. So uh, when OPA optimizes a little bit more for uh, high level overview on the cluster and high expressiveness, Falco focuses more on being everywhere, seeing stuff everywhere, very, very efficiently with, with low overhead and rules that are sim simpler uh, to craft, uh, essentially. Uh, some examples, uh, a shell is running a container. The, ro the rule is container ID different from host and process name equal bash. Um, uh, overwrite system binaries. Uh, you, there, there needs to be access on the file descriptor in a directory and this directory can be, you know, one of the directories that are uh, in this rule. So as you can see, it's essentially Boolean expressions that uh, can be used to chain uh, 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 checks that are done on uh, different uh, 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 different fields. And the list of fields is, is, is pretty, uh, pretty big and it's essentially documented uh, in, the, in, in the Falco GitHub. Example of, for example, spawn uh, a, a shell, uh, a database spawns a shell. Uh, this is the condition, you know, process name in database binaries and process is spawned. And uh, uh, the process name is not one of the processes that you would expect. Um, there's an output, which is what you see when you receive a notification when this rule is violated. The source, as we, as we were saying, it can be Kubernetes or system call, description, and um, uh, priority and text. Uh, rules can contain lists and macros so that uh, can be written in a more compact and reusable way. And of course, we don't expect you to you know, download Falco and have to write your own rules and learn the syntax and so on. Of course, you are welcome to do that, and we try to document as, as, as well as possible. But uh, Falco comes packaged with tens and tens and tens, probably hundreds at this point, of uh, uh, rules that are pre-packaged for you by an active community of people that uh, maintains these rules, keeps an eye uh, on the noisiness, uh, adds new or constantly new applications and new tools and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, the rules are even, you know, uh, aggregated and tagged based on the different uses. For example, there's a, a, a MITRE rule matrix where the where rules are tagged, and uh, and you can you have a subset of rules that is just for MITRE framework, you know, and uh, and you can use those, you know, exclusively with Falco if you want to essentially uh, uh, be compliant with that framework. All right, um, let's start with the slides uh, for a second. And let's actually take a look. So let me actually go into my virtual machine and uh, let me just run Falco, you know, right, right now, this is the possible way uh, to run Falco uh, and, and give it a try, you know. You download the tarball uh, from uh, uh, the, Falco, the Falco repository and then you just run it, you know. And when you do that, 
nothing happens, but uh, I can, you know, start operating in this machine and uh, say I can uh, um, uh, generate some um, pseudo malicious activity, like uh, let's uh, modify a binary file, which is something that is uh, never uh, that nice. And immediately, as you can see, Falco is just under the hood here in this machine and uh, uh, looking at, uh, at what's happening and it detects this and tells me essentially uh, file below binary directory open for writing. It tells me, you know, information about the user, information about the process that did, did that was the target for this. Uh, the, the, uh, sorry, the command line that generated this, the process that was the target for this, who was the parent, uh, all, all of this kind of uh, nice information that right now I just get on standard output, which is one of the many ways Falco chips uh, uh, out its output, but it can be, uh, you know, any, anything uh, else that we want. Let me try to do, actually, to start a container. So I'm just starting a, a Ubuntu container. And uh, when I do this, immediately Falco tells me, okay, uh, somebody spawned a shell in a container, which is normal here because it's an Ubuntu container, but you would agree with me that in production, it's never good when somebody just spawns a shell in a container that is, that is supposed to be mutable. So Falco gives me a notice for that, you know? Okay, careful because uh, there's a container now and somebody that has a root shell essential inside the container. And again, inside the container, I can generate some uh, malicious activity like uh, garbage into uh, slash dev slash fake device, for example. So I simulated creating essentially a, a a file under dev, you know, and, and Falco essentially tells me that a program that it doesn't trust uh, has done that. So as you can see now, I'm inside the container, uh, but Falco, even, even if it's running in the host, is able to essentially keep track of what's happening inside this specific container and any other container. Uh, and it uh, uh, doesn't matter how many I have running on this machine because it uses it, it, it installed, you know, this little EBP thing in the kernel of the operating system and now sees everything. At the same time, with max, maximum efficiency and by barely slowing down the target, uh, uh, the, the target processes. Of course, I can also run Falco on this machine as a Docker container. So now um, Falco, yeah, just started inside a container. This is an even simpler way to run Falco, but notice how I can, again, you know, generate malicious activity anywhere in the machine. And even if it's, if, if it's living in, in a container, Falco is still able to see it for uh, its container, the host, and any other container. So uh, the beauty of this is that, uh, yeah, uh, at the point deploying something like this, especially orchestrating the deployment of something like this becomes very nice. You don't need to have sidecars. You don't need to have, uh, to link libraries. You don't need to, to use uh, all of these uh, more invasive ways to deploy it. You just use a daemon set on Kubernetes and you tell, tell Kubernetes, I would like to have one of these running on each of my physical hosts. And then, you know, uh, with a little bit of glue configuration to tell essentially Falco where to pipe these events, uh, you're, you're, you're good, you're covered, right? So that's uh, uh, the, the power and the richness uh, of, uh, of, of Falco. Uh, similarly, uh, if uh, we want to look at these, uh, actually, let me go out to full, full screen. Um, here, uh, I have uh, uh, actually uh, a more like realistic deployment of Falco where Falco is running uh, on uh, AWS, in this case, on a Fargate uh, task. So here uh, I have my task and uh, I can uh, 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 take, the IP address of uh, one of the containers on my task, and I uh, uh, and I can go and log into it. Uh oh, looks like I lost my connectivity. Is that the right address? No. There it is and then go inside and they can do the same. I can just simulate uh, slash uh, bin slash cat, the same thing that I did before. 
So now I logged into, into the container and uh, I uh, simulated uh, activity. And now I can go and look at the logs in uh, CloudWatch. And as you can see, I'm getting the logs of Falco essentially detecting this. In particular, notice how here specifically, uh, Falco was run in a Fargate task. So um, uh, in this specific instance, we don't use the kernel module to uh, instrument because it's not possible in Fargate. And we revert to a technology which is called PDIG, which uh, allows Falco essentially to collect this information by sitting inside the container and using Ptrace. So as you can see, from one point of view, Falco tries to be as efficient as possible by defaulting to like eBPF and kernel module, which are the most efficient ways when possible. But when not possible, it can also go into uh, like orchest orchestrated container technologies in the cloud like Fargate and, and still work by uh, using uh, other technologies like Ptrace to, to do the, the instrumentation. So there's quite a bit of sophisticated stuff going on under the hood uh, here. Um, okay, just another uh, couple of slides before we go, we go into questions. So uh, first of all, uh, a little bit of uh, history. Um, we actually started Falco in 2016 uh, as uh, a way to uh, ad, uh, apply some of the concepts in uh, network security to broader containers like slash cloud native security. As I was mentioning at, at the beginning of the presentation, my background is uh, packet capture and in, in particular Wireshark. And another very important class of things that you can do with packets is uh, uh, network intr intrusion detection. Tools like Snort or Suricata and so on essentially uh, are based on capturing network packets, applying rules on top of the network packets, and uh, giving, giving you alerts if something, for example, is uh, sending you malware or something like that. And uh, uh, of course, you know, doing stuff from the network point of view, doing this kind of stuff from the network point of view is harder and harder, you know, in a world where we have a heavy orchestration. Uh, heavy encryption in the network uh, uh, and the use of containers that, uh, that make everything opaque. So Falco was designed uh, with a similar concept, but uh, with a different vintage point, the system calls, the runtime data coming from the operating system, which is uh, much closer to the final application and it's much more collectible in cloud native. Falco evolved uh, uh, quite a lot, both in terms of, uh, you know, becoming part of the CNCF and in terms of features and uh, grew quite a bit in terms of, uh, you know, contributors uh, and uh, number of users. Uh, among the things that we um, added uh, recently uh, to Falco, uh, like in the last six months, many rules improvements and in particular, a group of groups of rules uh, for like pod security policies, for, like, for MITRE framework, for crypto mining, which is another one that is pretty popular with our users. Um, we added a gRPC input and output interface. This goes uh, toward making Falco uh, um, able to integrate uh, well with any other tool in the ecosystem and also being able, being composable and being essentially a part of the stack that you can use in different ways. Based on uh, this uh, general input output interface, we create a lot of integrations, uh, Prometheus, Slack, Elasticsearch, AWS Lambda, and so on. We also worked uh, quite a bit on deployment of Falco, trying to make, make it easier and easier, for example, uh, by uh, offering uh, Helm charts uh, that come essentially prepackaged as uh, recipes. And um, also uh, we've been, uh, uh, spending quite a bit of time recently on uh, Ptrace instrumentation to make it possible to uh, collect data for um, stuff like uh, a Lambda, exactly like I showed you before during the demo. There's a blog post that we released recently with uh, stuff that we added uh, recently. I uh, encourage you to go take a look if you want to, if you want to learn more. Roadmap-wise, um, what we are looking into is uh, uh, Falco uh, developers. Uh, first of all, uh, the most important thing that we put on top of everything else is uh, uh, expand our community by delighting our users. So we are 
focus there on building something that uh, solves the problem, solves the problem in a way that is uh, not only effective, but also elegant and, uh, and, uh, and cool, actually, and nice to use. Uh, lowering the barrier, of course, Falco is and will remain a distributed tool that needs to run everywhere if you really want true security in potentially big and complex infrastructure. So we are always uh, talking to users that struggle with uh, ease of deployment, with maybe performance in particular situations, or maybe with stability. So the team is really uh, focused on uh, trying to just making this experience better and better so that Falco can be used more confidently by people. Integrations and being able to plug Falco into many different uh, things, cloud things, Kubernetes things, and so on. And platform, platform coverage. Fargate that I was mentioning before is an example, but uh, uh, for sure with something that collects uh, the, the, the data in such a rich way and that uh, uh, is really uh, based on the idea of having the best data, coverage and, uh, 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 I don't know, Fargate, Lambda, uh, Cloud Run, all, all of this kind of stuff, uh, is always a focus in the direction for us so that Falco can really be used broadly and cover any possible use case. And we are at 45. So uh, I'm going to just put some links on the screen and I'm going to stop here to see if there are questions from the audience. Okay, well, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Um, as I said before, uh, feel free to drop some questions into the Q&A section. Looks like we already have one here from Rajesh that says, when is the GA version due? Uh, Falco is, uh, has been GA uh, for, for, for quite a bit now. So if you go to falco.org uh, and uh, uh, you, um, uh, you follow the instructions, you can install it on your cluster and Falco is, um, uh, uh, is a tool that can be used for production ready workloads. So GA wise, I would assume, you know, <laughs> we're always releasing new stuff, uh, but, uh, uh, but Falco should be considered, uh, you know, ready, ready to be used. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions at all? Okay, Yuri Lee says that he installed Falco and has an error that repeats. Falco internal syscall event drop, one system calls dropped in the last second. Okay, this is a pretty benign, benign error. I recommend uh, you uh, just go to our GitHub here uh, and uh, um, open an issue and uh, the uh, uh, some of the, of the uh, engineers that, were, that that work on Falco will be able to to help you. But uh, uh, you, uh, it looks like uh, you have some uh, some kind of drops. So it could be a configuration of Falco. But if it's just one one system call that is dropped, it's probably like just physiological. But um, it's something that uh, uh, we see from users once in a while, uh, and um, uh, would be able to help you with that if you if you just go to to our GitHub and and, and you open an issue with us. Okay, does Sysdid provide any support for it if necessary? Sysdig does provide support for Falco. Yes, Sysdig also offers a product called Sysdig Secure uh, that is uh, um, uh, uh, heavily based on Falco for runtime security. So uh, Sysdig Secure also offers uh, a bunch of other functionality like image scanning, forensics, uh, uh, audit stream, compliance, and all of this kind of stuff. But uh, um, for, um, let's say, uh, commercial use, uh, you can come to, this, to Sysdig for both essentially support with uh, uh, running Falco uh, as, as, an, as an independent tool or for uh, commercial tools that are based on top of Falco. What is the difference between Falco and Istio? So uh, Istio is um, uh, 
more like a, a, let's say a generic network mesh. So Istio is uh, a, a mesh, a network of sidecars that you put of little proxies that you that you deploy as sidecars near inside all of your pods near your your containers near near your your applications and uh, essentially with istio all of the network traffic uh, of uh, of your applications of your containers in in kubernetes will go through the istio proxies at that point istio can do a, a bunch of stuff that uh, ranges from uh, observability uh, a, a circuit breaker uh, and testing and uh, and also uh, security uh, enforcement and micro segmentation uh, so istio is uh, very much network oriented uh, and uh, uh, it's another part important part of the runtime security equation and uh, operates from the especially from the security point of view uh, at the uh, network segmentation level. While Falco is, is more like able to see inside the containers and to notify you when something that you should pay attention to happens inside your containers. If we go uh, back to you know the previous world, the previous data center world, Istio is more like your firewall, your checkpoint firewall, Falco is more like your intrusion detection system, like your uh, uh, source fire slash, slash Cisco uh, intrusion detection system. You want both because one essentially is uh, your lock on the door. The other one is your security camera. Falco is the security camera. Istio is more like, among other things, the, the, lo the lock on the door. Can you elaborate on the compliance rules supported by Falco OOB? Yes. So um, compliance is many things, right? And uh, uh, starts at the CICD level. You know, starts uh, in the in the build phase uh, of, uh, of 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 CICD, where uh, you want to check conf configuration for your images and so on. But then compliance is also uh, runtime. And essentially, uh, making sure that uh, um, uh, actions that uh, uh, are a concern from the security point of view are not performed at runtime. And if they are, you are notified. And there's a trail that essentially allows you to document them and, uh, and prove essentially the, 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 the compliance of, of, of your infrastructure. Examples of things. Uh, that um, you want to check at, at runtime from the compliance point of view. Um, uh, not running privileged containers is a good example. Uh, specific policies on the data you know that you have or on the on the processes that you run. Not running, as I was showing before, shells you know uh, in your production environment. All of this kind of stuff can be detected by Falco, and Falco can report all of these uh, all, all of this information and allow you essentially to create a paper trail of uh, of anything that happened in uh, in your uh, in your environment across time so that uh, if an auditor comes uh, you know you 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 can show that in the last six months you didn't have any uh privileged container that was executed in your, in, your, in your infrastructure uh falco has a set of rules that are particularly and specifically crafted to match against uh, the main compliance frameworks, for example, PCI. So if you go to, to the Falco uh, rule set, which is a big YAML file, and you look at the tags, you will see that many rules in the Falco rule set are tagged as PCI. These are rules that have been created by security professionals, by members of the, of the Falco community that will notify you if something that happens on your infrastructure violates a specific PCI uh, rule, you know, a specific uh, PCI, PCI entry. And uh, um, when you deploy Falco, uh, you can essentially, if you want, choose to only deploy, deploy rule sets that map 
to specific compliance frameworks and offer uh, a certain percentage of, of coverage for these frameworks. Can Falco be integrated with Celium? Uh, not really, because they do uh, slide, they do different things. Uh, the thing that Falco and Celium have in common is that they are both based on eBPF, so they both use these. Uh, powerful and revolutionary functionality in the Linux kernel. But Cilium uses eBPF to be much more attached to the networking stack, while Falco wants to be, again, a broader intrusion detection system. So Cilium, uh, from the point of view of essential integration and be used together, is uh, uh, a little bit more like a, 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 something that, that matches Istio rather than Falco. So um, some similar technological choices, but uh, we don't really have deep integration among, among the tools. Okay, does anybody else have any questions at all? Do you have any planned integration with notifications beyond Slack? Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, again, go to the website. I cannot list all of them here. But uh, if you need to integrate Falco with something, very good chance it's already there. Slack was an example, you know, but uh, 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 there's, there's uh, you name it, you know, uh, log collection systems uh, like Splunk and so on. Uh, stuff like pager duty and, and similar uh, chats, uh, webhooks, uh, uh, monitoring to Prometheus. So there's there's a bunch of them. Uh, so it's it's not only Slack. Is there any UI on top of Falcon? Uh. Not on top of Falco open source. You can buy Sysdig Secure, it's commercial, but it gives you a very, very nice UI on top of Falco. Is there a difference between system Falco service and Falco in container? No. Uh, if properly configured, no, uh, because uh, they do the same thing. So we give you the choice from running it in the system, for example, installing it in the host as a tarball or uh, running it inside a container. Functionality wise, performance wise, uh, they are absolutely equivalent. So whatever works best for you. Okay. Do we have any more questions? We have about three minutes left. Talking about performance, what is the overhead? Okay, uh, market the answer, it's low. <laughs> um, in practice, the overhead depends on the uh, workload profile of the system that Falco is observing. So uh, if Falco is properly configured and tuned uh, and uh, the system is uh, not like uh, an edge case, you should expect to see something like uh, a handful of uh, CPU percentage points used by Falco and an amount of memory that varies depending on what you do with Falco. Because if Falco is, is configured to only look at local data and not uh, consume the Kubernetes state, then the memory footprint is tiny. If Falco is configured to fetch the Kubernetes metadata because you have service-oriented rules or stuff like that, then there's a memory requirement in terms of bringing in essentially the Kubernetes state to understand metadata and all that kind of stuff. And memory can grow uh, higher to up to, let's say, hundreds of megabytes or, 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 or something like that. Uh, 
so that depends. Um, but uh, uh, overall, again, Falco has been designed to run in a production environment in a way that whose overhead should be barely measurable. Well, thank you very much. Um, that's about all the time we have for today. Uh, as I said before, uh, today's presentation will be available later today on the CNCF website. Thank you again, everyone, for your time. Have a wonderful thank rest you. of your day. Thank you.